Now I've got these three tools in there set. I'm ready to go program and set my part zeros and cut my job. Now some folks that are watching this training video that have some prior CNC experience might think that using a reference tool is like adding an extra step to setting your tool height offset values. When in reality it's really a time saver. Because the old method of setting all your tool heights off the top of the work may work, but what it does is it requires you then to reset or remeasure those tools for every single job that you do even if they're the same tools that you just got done using. So if you're a job shop and you're making two or three or five different parts a day, let's say with five tools each, you have to reset those tools each time. So you're setting 25 times in a day you're setting tools. With the Centroid reference tool method, it reduces setup time because if I have those five tools, I only have to measure them once against the reference tool. I can then machine as many different parts as I want What's great then, for setting your part zeros for all those different parts, I pick any one tool that's set up in the tool library. It doesn't matter which one. Any tool set up in the tool library to set my work coordinate, my part zero, and then all the other tools in the tool library are automatically set to that zero. I don't have to individually touch each tool off the top of the work. As soon as I measure them against the reference tool, pick any one, set that one, use that one to set the top of your work and all the other ones are automatically set. Load a different job, pick any one tool, use that tool to set the top of the work, all the other tools are automatically set. So every time I do a different part, it's saving me all that immense amount of setup time that I would have to do with the old method of setting off the top of the work, heart, work zero each time. Another advantage is out of these five tools that I set, if I break one of them, with the old method, if you break any one tool, you have to reset all your other tools because they're relative to each other. With our method, they're all measured off the reference tool. So if I break one tool out of 25 that I'm using, all I have to do is measure just that one tool again, or remeasure just that one tool when I replace it against the reference tool. All the other tools are still the same, still measured off the reference tool. I don't have to remeasure them. So you got a big time-saving advantage to go on with the reference tool method. After setting my height offset values with my reference tool, I'm free to move the knee to whatever position I need. Now, one of the reasons why I'm stressing this point is that I don't want you to confuse setting part Z0 positions with setting your tool height offsets. It kind of looks the same. You're touching the tool off the top of a position. Okay? I don't want you to confuse the two because they're completely different. When we were using the reference position and touching the tools off, all we were doing is telling the control the difference in length between all our tools. Now, when I use that same tool to come back and touch off the top of my work to set a Z0 position, what's great about the reference tool method is all those other tools are automatically set to that position as well. So I only have to touch off the top of my workpiece once with one tool. And it can be any tool that's set up in the tool library. Now that you know how to set tool height offset values manually using a 1, 2, 3 block and a reference tool, let me show you a faster, easier, and much more accurate way with the Centroid optional TT1 tool touch off block. The TT1 plugs into the back of the control and the control will automatically jog the tool down touch off the block and record the tool height offset value in the library for you automatically. Let's go check out how it works. I'm going to plug the TT1 in and again we want to use the top of the vise. There's a nice magnet on the bottom of the TT1 and I'm going to use the top of the vise or the top of the table. Either one works great for a reference position. Now we're going to set a reference position just like we did with the 1, 2, 3 block. So we're going to load the reference tool. Except in this case, the control is going to automatically move the reference tool down to, to the TT1 and touch off of it. So I'm going to jog on over. And again, I want to reduce the, the distance between the reference tool and the TT1 just like I did on the 1, 2, 3 block so that it's only like 10, 20 thousandths or so, but not touching. 
When using the TT1, you still have to set a reference position. So using the same menu, the same tool height offset menu that I was in before, I'm actually going to hit the exact same F1 Z ref button as I did before with the 123 block. Step two says jog to the reference position. That's what we did with the ref that's what we did with the 123 block. But now I'm using the TT1, so it says or press F3 to seek the probe. I'm going to hit F3, then cycle start. The control moves down, the reference tool touches off the TT1 and sets a reference position faster than I can say it. Man, that's great. Now I'm ready to go measure the other tools. Insert tool one. Just like I did before, I'm gonna jog back over. Going to make sure my cursor is sitting at tool height offset number one. Now I can do two things at this point. I can hit F3 auto. As soon as I hit F3 auto, the tool is going to automatically come down and touch off the probe. But in this case, the tool is very, very short, and I'm really not quite sure whether it's lined up with the probe. So that's easy. I can just jog down to get close to the probe to make sure that things are lining up. Now things are looking like they're lining up real good. Now I can hit F3 auto, then cycle start. The tool automatically comes down, touches off the probe. If you're watching real close, you'll notice that it hits the probe once at a fast jog rate, backs up a little bit, and then slowly comes in and touches it. That's to achieve maximum accuracy. The TT1 is as good as your machine. If your machine's holding tense, you'll be able to re repeat tense on measuring tools. Now let's load the next tool. Okay, I got tool 2 lo uh, loaded. I'm going to make sure the cursor is sitting on tool 2. I'm going to hit F3 auto and then cycle start. Tool 2 is going to jog on down to the TT1. Touch off. Bingo, that's all there was to it. The control just recorded the height offset value for tool 2. Now I do the same thing for tool 3. Make sure my cursor is at the tool number that I'm recording. Away we go. There we go. I just got done measuring three tools in about a quarter of the time that it took me to do it with the 123 block. Much more faster and accurate, pays for itself in a short period of time, especially if you're constantly breaking down and setting up different jobs and having to measure different tools all the time. If I can remove one drill bit out of a drill chuck and put another bit back in at approximately the same height, then that drill bit has the same tool height offset as the one as I took out. You can actually have a group of drills. Each drill would be tool 3, 4, 5, 6, but they're all going to have the exact same height offset value. And when the control comes up and asks you for a tool change, you're not actually taking the drill chuck out, you're just sliding the new drill bit in at approximately the same length as the one you took out. Hit and cycle start and away you go. And there's a couple of different ways to do this. If you're drilling through holes and it's not that critical, you can just use some magic marker, make a mark on there, line the mark up. Yeah, it's within 10 or 20 thousandths, but that's going to be good enough for a through hole. Another method might be putting a collar on the drill bit so that you can repeat more accurately to the same position. That's a quick trick. You might have two or three drill chucks that do two or three groups of ranges of different size drill bits. Obviously I couldn't take a three quarter inch diameter drill bit and line it up with this eighth inch. It's only going to work over a range of drill bits. So that'll save you from having to buy a ton of different drill chucks. Another little trick I'd like to tell you is if your program is only using one tool, it is not necessary to measure it against the reference tool. The reference tool is only really necessary when your programs have two or more tools in them so the control knows the difference in height between the tools. Well, if your program only has one tool, there's nothing else to worry about. This tool, however, will still have a tool number. Just make sure that the height offset value for that particular tool number is zero, and then when you're setting your part zero position, be sure to tell the control that's the particular tool that you're using to set your part zero and that tool is the tool number in your program. 
When those things are met, you do not have to measure that tool off the reference tool. 